All right, let's talk budgets. Uh, last week, Governor Cooper released a 250 page long document outlining his uh, fiscal priorities for the next two years, as well as providing the North Carolina General Assembly with a balanced state budget that speaks to those priorities. Um, <clears throat> I'll be honest, budgets are something that can be really boring. And who has the time to read through a 250 long or 250 page long document? But budgets are also really important. There's absolutely nothing that happens in our state for free. And budgets are where we see what our elected representatives really value um, and what they're willing to fund. So Governor Cooper's budget was released. Um, and of course, the budget that we see come out of the General Assembly will likely look very different, but it is really helpful to see what Governor Cooper is asking the General Assembly to prioritize. Um, there are a couple of places where I think he did really well. You know, you could say he struck gold. And there's one, one area where I think that uh, Governor Cooper could be a lot stronger. Um, okay, so two things that give me hope. Number one, healthcare. Yet again, Governor Cooper is making the case for North Carolina to expand Medicaid. We are one of only 12 states that have not yet expanded Medicaid. And that means that uh, we have more than 680,000 North Carolinians existing in the healthcare gap. Expanding Medicaid would get them health coverage. It would help keep our rural hospitals open and strong. Um, it would reduce the number of uninsured veterans and it would help us fight the opioid crisis. And so, um, you know, with an offer on the table of no less than $1.7 billion from the federal government, if we expand Medicaid, I think that the North Carolina General Assembly would have to reach pretty far uh, for an excuse to deny us this health coverage. The second place where I think Cooper came in pretty strong is on education. Um, Governor Cooper's budget proposes providing K through 12 teachers a 10% salary increase on average over the next two years um, and making sure that all non-certified school personnel receive a minimum wage of $15 per hour. This I think is amazing because not only does it help provide a living wage, for the folks who are working in our schools. It also sets the stage for us to, um, or it also makes the case for us to raise the minimum wage in our entire state to $15 per hour. So I think this is something in Governor Cooper's budget that I really loved seeing. Um, it also provides long overdue financial support to our public schools and invests in early um, education and child development and makes the case for um, expanding broadband internet. Uh, so there's more to be done on education, definitely, um, but I think that this is really a step in the right direction. Now, there's one place in Governor, Go Governor Cooper's budget where I really think it's time for him to be bold, and that is housing. While Governor Cooper's budget does address uh, the need for more affordable housing, um, it doubles our state's housing trust fund, um, it fails to address a more urgent question that is sitting on my mind right now, which is what is going to happen to families who can't afford to pay their back rent after the eviction moratorium is lifted? Um, when the CDC lifts this moratorium on June 30th, our state will face an evictions crisis when you know tens of thousands of people are expected to be able to immediately pay the rent that they were unable to pay during the pandemic. Um, meanwhile, Cooper's budget leaves more than $1 billion of the unreserved funds um, untouched. So why haven't our legislators put our unhoused neighbors in long-term housing during this pandemic? Why haven't our legislators uh, created a system where um, people are uh, going to have their rent and mortgages paid instead of having to face evic an eviction when we've got money in the bank, bank to pay their rent. 
Um, North Carolina needs people in office to be bold and fight for a world where housing is something that every single person has. And I really think that when looking at our state budgets, we cannot afford to leave money in the bank while um, people are looking at situations in which they may not have a home any longer. So that's my take on Governor Cooper's budget. We're making moves on healthcare. We're making moves on education. I love that $15 minimum wage um, for non-certified school staff. We could do a lot better on housing and it's something we need to take a look at as we're formulating um, budgets in the General Assembly. Um, now, like I said, these budgets are gonna look really different coming out of the General Assembly. Um, budgets are where there's been a lot of uh, tension between the governor's office and the General Assembly over the last several years. So um, one of the biggest fights that I think we'll be looking at is the fight to expand Medicaid. I love that Cooper has come out strong, but we are already seeing the same Republican talking points. Uh, what will happen if that money goes away? Um, we want to get health care to folks, but we just don't know if expanding Medicaid is the right thing. It absolutely is. We are being offered the money to cover Medicaid expansion multiple times over, and we've got to take it. We cannot afford to continue letting people lose their lives or enter into a lifetime of debt because our General Assembly wants to make health care um, a partisan issue. So if you're interested in getting involved in our healthcare campaign, you can follow the link um, that we're going to provide just below um, to join the work. All right. Thanks, y'all.